Hey, what's up guys? John here. An insurance crisis is sweeping through the entire state of Florida. Ongoing property insurance crisis continues to impact Florida homeowners. Some insurance companies now increasing rates as much as 50% in 2024 alone. It's gotten so bad to where Citizens Property Insurance Group is now talking about taking over the entire state. Citizens is the last resort property insurance provider in the state, and only those who are left with no other affordable options can sign up. Essentially forming a monopoly and insuring millions and millions of millions of properties. What we're walking into is unlike anything we've ever before witnessed. For example, just three months ago, I put out a video saying, hey, I received a letter saying that, you know, I have to pay almost 20 grand or I have the option of paying almost $400 a month for the next five years, or they're going to put a lien on my property. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I talked to my friend the other day who owns a condo in Miami Beach. I said, hey, how much has your insurance went up in your HOA? He said, oh, my HOA has increased 40% because of the new cost that we had to undergo just to get insurance. A 40% increase. So for context, almost $600 a month that he has to now pay. The big question is how many people can afford to pay this? Well, when you look at what's actually happened over the last couple of years, properties in Florida have risen 80% over the past five years. 80%. So there's so much new wealth that's being hidden into these properties, but at the same time, the cost of living is skyrocketing and real wages are softening. So the haves and the have-nots are going to continue to grow ever so far apart. And so when you look at what's happening, I believe we're going to see millions of people being pushed out of their homes and millions of investors stepping in, acquiring these properties and buying them for cash and self-insuring them. Because you look at how many properties, for example, in Miami, nearly half of them have no mortgage at all. So look at what's going on. I'm going to break down the facts. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on. So you can position yourself. If you're thinking about buying a property in Florida or maybe selling a property in Florida, taking this information so you can make a smart, well-informed decision based on the facts. Please hit the like button. Hit the like button. YouTube will share the content. Educate more people about what's going on in Florida and in the U.S. economy. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for what I believe is going to be the greatest wealth transfer in American history, we'd love to help fix your credit. If you have any late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report at all, go to greatcreditpass.com by clicking the link in the description just below this video. Schedule free starting session for tomorrow, for Thursday. Take a look at this. So, what percentage of properties are completely vacant, you know, owned by snowbirds, retirees? The answer, roughly 1.7 million homes are vacant in Florida. 1.7 million. That is absolutely shocking. So when you look at this number, what I believe is going to happen as insurance rates continue to rise, a lot of people are either going to sell their properties in Florida or sell their primary residence. A lot of people are retiring early that have the means to do so, and they're going to move to their properties in Florida. So there's going to be a lot of properties that are likely either going to come up for sale, going to come up for rent, or people are just going to move back into them. Right? A lot of change is going to be coming into the state of Florida because of the rising cost. Florida insurance companies plan over 50% rate rise. This just came out. Two private insur home insurance companies operating in Florida are proposing to raise their rates by over 50%, a move that could bring even higher premiums for, floor for homeowners in the state who are already paying the most expensive coverage in the entire country. The two insurers, Castle Key, a subsidiary of Allstate, and America uh, Mutual Insurance, which are trying to increase the rates 53 and 54 percent as reported by a local broadcaster. This would bring rates to $4,218 a year on average. And that's for homes. You look at, you know, and condos. You look at what people are paying if they live anywhere near the beach. It's a lot more than that, right? That is a lot more than that. A lot of people don't live by the beach. A lot of people live on the other side of 95, live a little further. And so when you look at, you know, what a lot of people are actually paying, it's much, much higher than $4,200. So look at what Citizens is now proposing to do. Bill approved to allow Citizens Insurance to cover homes valued over 700,000, right? So they're gonna to continue to expand into a uh, wealthier part of the market, and they are going to do this. Florida lawmakers pitch radical idea to solve property insurance crisis should Floridians use Citizens for the hurricane premiums. Senate uh, State Rep Spencer Roach, a Republican from North Fort Myers believes he has a solution to Florida's property insurance crisis. On Tuesday, a House committee gave him a chance to make a pitch. During a 30-minute presentation, a discussion, Roach and Rep. Hillary Castle, a Democrat from Dana Beach, described a radically different version, vision 
for homeowners in Florida. Instead of Floridians paying hurricane premiums to private for profit insurers, they could be covered by the state run citizens property insurance and probably for cheaper, citizens would collect the money much like a national flood insurance program. Private insurance companies would still provide coverage for fire, theft and damage and even wind coverage if they wanted. So this would allow them to kind of move in. It's kind of like if you ever, you know, you insure your car, maybe you use it with State Farm, and then they'll offer you a benefit. Hey, we'll give you a discount on home insurance. We'll give you a discount on this other insurance. And they slowly start to try to weasel their way into getting all of your business. The same thing could happen with, the, with citizens, but this is a government backed insurance company. So just imagine what would happen if a lot of the competitors just get pushed out of the market, right? And you have one large player basically taking over it would be a really big problem. And when, you know, where they're at right now, well over a million something policies just in the state, roughly 20% of all insurance is roughly, uh, you know, 20, 22% of all insurance policies are held by citizens. You start to look at what's happening. They're gonna continue growing this market share, which could be a problem if one really, really big disaster unfolds, you know, one massive storm where this company maybe goes belly up, just imagine what that would look like, right? coverage, the cost to insure in Florida would go parabolic. It would go absolutely through the roof. So when, what I think is happening right now is I believe there's a lot of people that are getting pushed out of Florida. They just simply can't afford it. They're moving to other locations. They're trying to go to a place to where they can comfortably live, right? They're going to prioritize feeding themselves over, you know, living inside of Florida. And so you're looking at a rising inventory, really, really picking up. And I think it's going to continue to rise. Now, Florida HOA fees are soaring. Here's what to know. Condominiums, homeowner associations, Castle Keys, 54% condo rate hike gets a hearing one day ago, two weeks ago, one month ago. Naples owner battling HOA over repairs. Jacksonville condo, 13,000. They need to pay 13,000 by the summer to make the repairs. I mean, this is what happened to me, almost 20 grand. So it, it's crazy. It's happening so quickly. It's happening so quickly and insurance for vehicles going up through the roof as well. So. I think this all kind of ties back into what Glenn Kelman, the CEO of Redfin said a very long time ago. He said this roughly a year ago, and then he also said something similar in uh, 2021, saying that the cost of insurance going forward in the future is gonna get very, very, very expensive. And because of this, you have to think of how buyers buy properties. They buy it based on their debt to income ratio if they're getting financing. So if insurance is going up and it's unpredictable what the cost will likely be in the very near future, you have to imagine what a lender is gonna look look at. They're going to look at the loan a little bit different. They're going to say, you know what, traditionally, you know, you could afford maybe $2,500, $3,000 a month as a monthly payment, but we don't know where insurance will be in three years, four years. So because of that, maybe we're going to go closer to $2,200. We're going to take some risk off the table because, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to get stuck with the loss. And that's exactly what Glenn Cummins saying. People buying homes in Florida's flood prone coast will likely have trouble selling them in the future. There's going to be a smaller pool of buyers especially when you start to see the wave of technology that's going to be you know, advancing over the next couple of years, next five, 10 years, there's going to be a lot of people being pushed out of work. So I believe it's going to be a lot harder to get financing for a lot of these properties, just like what Glenn Kelman said. But I do believe you're going to see a lot of investors stepping in, acquiring a lot of these properties because they're going to look at you know, what's going to be happening with the dollar, which is going to be a slow erosion of purchasing power. And people are going to rather own hard real assets than you know, sit with a lot of fiat. And owning beautiful coastal properties, I think we're going to see a lot of investors stepping in trying to acquire these deals for pennies on the dollar. Because at the end of the day, the property price is not determined by the seller, it's determined by the buyer. If a smaller pool of available buyers are out there and there's more sellers that are you know, anxious to unload these properties, price is going to be coming down. right? When you look at a market like Florida, where you've seen 80% price appreciation over 60 months, but when does that ever happen? When is that ever sustainable in the long term? It's never, right? And so look at this situation. Florida has experienced five federally declared disasters since 2000 in the form of strong hurricanes, tropical storms that have caused flooding and severe housing damage and ultimately cost the state insurance companies and taxpayers billions of dollars. However, despite the environmental devastation, Americans continue to purchase homes in a natural disaster prone state, even though home sales and values remain at risk in Florida, most skeptical, susceptible to sea level rising. Glenn Kelman, CEO of Redfin, said it's a problem that is likely to escalate as climate ramps up. The insurers, the lenders, the appraisers, everyone is stepping back from these coastal properties because they are so vulnerable to superstorms and becoming increasingly common. 
said in a podcast with Barron's. Adding the perspective, buyers cannot afford the housing costs that come with living in these risky areas. Now, let's look at what it would actually cost to buy you know, a median price home in Florida, probably closer to half a million bucks. So with 11% down, which is the national down payment, national average, you know, people that buy second homes usually putting you know, 15, 20, sometimes 25% down, and first time buyers on average are putting down about 6%. So about 11% down, and with an 8% mortgage rate, which sounds high, but if you have a credit score above the national average, which is a 698, it's 7.882. If you are at a 680, it's 8.5%. So well, let's just be even more conservative. Let's just say it's a 7.5%. Maybe you have a really, really good lender. You're able to get it done, you know, 7.5%. And with the new insurance rates, the 4218, which was listed here by uh, Newsweek, 4218, then this would bring your cost to $4,000 per month when you could probably rent something in Florida for 2200 bucks, 2100 bucks, two grand, depending on your area. There's a lot of really good deals for rent right now. And so what you're gonna start to see here is a really, really big uh, question that's gonna be getting answered by a lot of property owners that are stepping into an affordability crisis. Do I maintain myself in this property? Can I stay in this property? Or do I need to sell and rent or relocate out of the state? So what do you think about this entire situation? What do you think is gonna happen next? Do you think we're gonna see insurance continue to skyrocket, citizens essentially taking over the market and a lot of change coming? I think so. And I think we're gonna see a lot of really wealthy people stepping forward to acquire a lot of this distress. Drop below, let's have a conversation about this. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself, maybe you're looking for business funding, maybe you have a really big goal, make sure your credit score is in line with your goals. So if you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description just below this video and schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow. Catch you next video.